Well, hello, Shoreline Congregation and all of you scattered around our community and around our nation, around the world, that are just being encouraged by these devotionals. Uh, I'm continuing on. I'm over halfway through my 10 favorite passages from the Bible. And remember, I love them all. I love the whole Bible, but there's some that have just really hit my heart. And today we're going to look at the beginning of Jonah chapter 4. And Jonah is this short little book of the Bible. You can sit down and read it in probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, but God calls Jonah to go to, the, to one of the most violent, vicious, pagan nations on the face of the earth at that time, the Assyrian nation, and to go to their capital, to Nineveh, and to preach and call them to repentance. And Noah gets in a boat and goes the opposite direction because the last thing he wants in his life and in his heart and his mind is for, for the Ninevites, for the Assyrians, this, this wicked, violent, warlike people, the last thing he wants is for them to receive God's grace. He wants them to be judged. Now you say, what kind of prophet is that? That was Jonah. He struggled with this. As a matter of fact, after he's been kind of personally delivered by a huge fish to the shore of the area there, after he goes and preaches, he sits on a hillside and watches the city, hoping that God will still judge them. He's hoping that the message of repentance that he preached was not received. And when he realizes that they've heard the message and they've turned their heart toward God, instead of being happy, he's ticked off. He's upset. So listen to these words from Jonah chapter 4. And this is when Jonah realizes that God's not going to judge those people, but he's going to bring them grace. And, and understand, they had done lots of vicious things. If you look at the history of the Assyrian people in that time of history, they were, they were going to destroy entire people groups. They were violent. So he had reason to be afraid of them, but, but God wanted to show grace. They repented. God showed grace, and he was bothered. So here's what we read. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. The fact that God didn't judge them but showed them grace, he said, this is wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. This is one of the funniest, if you don't think there's humor in the Bible, you're not reading this the right way. Because listen, he prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? He said, God, I prayed, I talked to you about this. I, I knew this was going to happen. He says, that this is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I didn't want to see this happen. I knew, God, that you are a gracious and compassionate God. I knew that you're slow to anger, that you're abounding in love and you relent from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. This is God's prophet. <laughs> he says, God, you want to show mercy on these people. You called me to call them to repentance. I ran away. You forced me to get here. I did it, but now I'm still, I, I'm so bitter towards these people. I want them to come under your judgment. So when God showed compassion, when their city wasn't judged, when God showed grace, he says, I knew it. He says, God, I knew you were gracious, kind, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. I knew you were going to show compassion on them, and I didn't want it. This should speak to our hearts. Just a couple of thoughts. This is kind of a funny passage to say. It's one of your 10 favorite passages. But for me, it speaks to the, the evangelistic heart of God, that God wants all to come to a knowledge of salvation. So here's a couple of things I notice in this passage. First, it's, it's Jonah's sense of injustice. Jonah says, it's an injustice, God, that you would forgive them. And here's what it came down to. Jonah believed that God should forgive sinners like Jonah, like himself. But he wasn't sure that God should forgive sinners like the Ninevites. And I think we can be like that. I think we can look and say, well, I'm part of God's family, and you know, my sins and my rebellion wasn't that bad. But we can look at certain, look at certain groups of people or certain people we know and just think, you know, I just can't imagine how God could love them, how God could save them. And check your heart. I have to check my heart at times to recognize that God desires that all would come to a knowledge of salvation. That's not teaching universalism because not everyone is saved, but God offers that gift to everyone. So who are those people that you know that you kind of think they're beyond God's grace or you almost don't think they deserve God's grace and say, God, change my heart. I don't want to be a Jonah, upset that you show grace to people who are messed up because God, you showed grace to me. And then, and then a second thing I think is very powerful is that Jonah knew the heart of God. You know, do we? Do we know that God is loving and compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love? Do you know that when God looks at the most broken, the most sinful, the most rebellious, the most violent, and, and just, just, just their life, people's lifestyles that are just totally anti-God, that God says, I still love them and Jesus died for them. Do you know that God is compassionate and abounding in steadfast love for you, but also for others? And finally, at the end, uh, when, when Jonah says, you know what, Lord, I'd rather die than see this, this act of grace in your hands. I, I 
hope and pray that somehow for Jonah that changed in his heart. But I want to say to you, take delight in every person who walks toward Jesus, who comes to faith in Jesus. Take delight in every step someone has on their journey to Jesus and celebrate that because God's grace is enough for you and for me and for Jonah and for the Ninevites and for whoever you have in your life, no matter how tough they are, God's grace is enough. Take delight in his grace and share it with others. Lord, our prayer today is that whoever we interact with, we will be ready and prepared to let them know, God, that you know them, that you love them, that your grace is enough, that we would know our story of how you changed our life, but we would know your story of how you came and gave yourself, your story from Jonah, your story from Jesus coming and dying on the cross, all of your stories of grace that show the world that your arms are wide open to the most rebellious of people, including us. We give you thanks and praise. Shine your light through us, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. And again, services at 9 and 11 this coming Sunday morning online on our campus in the courtyard and in cars. And if you're going to be on the courtyard or in the parking lot, please go online right away and register how many spots you need. And we'll have a spot waiting for you. God bless you and have a great rest of the week.